So hello everyone, and welcome to this session of the Permit COE webinar series. Today, Marco Ruscone is going to talk about multi-scale model of the different modes of invasion, a feasible application. My name is Daniel Tomas Lopez. I am involved in Permit COE on behalf of Embelli BI, and I am going to host this webinar. Before starting, I would like to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded, including the questions and answers section, and that the recording will be disseminated afterwards. After the presentation, we will have time for questions, so please use the Q&A button in your Zoom panel for asking questions during the webinar. Please note that all materials are licensed under a CC BY 4.0 license, except where further licensing details are provided. Permit COE is the HPC Exascale Center of Excellence for Personalized Medicine in Europe. Permit COE focuses on simulation of cellular mechanistic models, which are essential to translate omics data into medical actions. The performance of cell simulation software is still not enough to address problems such as tumor evolution or finding personalized treatments for patients. Permit COE will scale up the software for cell simulation uh, to the present HPC exascale systems in order to enable the creation of models of cellular functions and medical relevance. Permit COE will achieve this goal through a series of objectives. First, it is optimizing cell level simulation software to run in pre exascale platforms. Second, it is developing a series of use cases that show the applications of uh, Permit COE products in different fields of clinical interest, such as drug synergies for cancer treatments or multi-scale modeling of COVID-19 virus and patient tissue. Additionally, Permit COE also has as objectives training the biomedical professionals, integrating the Permit communities into the European HPC scale ecosystem, and building the basis for the sustainability of Permit COE. Today's webinar is going to talk about the developments and use of one of the Permit COE software Fitiboss. Let me now introduce our speaker. Marco Ruscone is a PhD student in the Computation Systems Biology of a Cancer Tech Group at Institut Curie in Paris, France. He started his academic career in Turin, Italy, where he pursued his bachelor's degree in physics and master's degree in physics of complex systems for the biology at the Università di Stati di Torino. Currently, his work focuses on developing multi-scale models of cancer using a mixed approach, approach of agent-based modeling and simulation on Boolean networks. So uh, Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So let me share my slides. Okay. Okay, I hope you can see Yes. Slides correctly. Perfect. So, um, well, hello everyone. Uh, as uh, Daniel introduced, uh, my name is Marco Ruscone. I'm a PhD student at uh, Institute Curie in the CISBIO group, uh, led by Emmanuel Barilo, and I'm supervised by Laurence Calzon, uh, Val San Noel, and Andrei Zinoviev. So, first of all, let me thank uh, the organizer of this uh, webinar for giving giving me the possibility of. Uh, uh, showing you my my PhD project, which, which is the developing of this uh, uh, multi-scale model of different modes of uh, cancer cell invasion uh, uh, using TCBOS. So uh, let me give you a summary of uh, what this presentation will be about. So I will start with uh, an introduction uh, about the biology behind the model and uh, uh, introducing also the methods. So how do we plan to do multi-scale modeling. And then I will go a bit more in the detail of, uh, of uh, this uh, invasion, uh, invasion model. So I will explain you uh, how we developed it, uh, the, the results, and uh, uh, the analysis. Uh, finally, we'll propose you some, uh, some challenges that we are currently facing when developing this kind of model. Uh, I will conclude, and then uh, uh, I, will, um, I will show you some more things that we can uh, model using uh, Fizibos. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. Uh, a few words about, uh, uh, about the biology. The idea uh, of, uh, of this model was to simulate uh, a growing tumor. Uh, and in particular, we wanted to uh, focus on the early steps of uh, uh, metastatization. 
So uh, at the beginning, we have uh, uh, a spheroid of uh, epithelial cancer cell that grows. And then at certain point, those epithelial uh, cells, we get in contact with the extracellular matrix. So when in contact with the ECM, uh, the cell uh, will mm, sense, uh, of course, the, the collagen and uh, a series of, uh, of uh, signals will, uh, will um, uh, make so that the cancer cell will move from an epithelial phenotype to a mesenchymal uh, phenotype. So in this, uh, in this state, the cell acquire uh, more motility and then it starts uh, degrading the extracellular matrix uh, through the secretion of uh, uh, MMPs, uh, matrix metalloproteases, which are some proteins that uh, uh, degrades the collagen uh, and uh, breaks the fibers of the ECM. So uh, once this is, uh, uh, this is accomplished, the, the cells can move through the ECM in different modes. Uh, a cell can be by, by itself, so basically has no adhesion with any other mesenchymal or epithelial cells and migrating itself uh, through the ECM, so it is a case of single cell migration, but sometimes uh, the cell has enough junction to bring with uh, uh, with it some some other cells, epithelial or mesenchymal, and form cluster that migrates together through the ECM, and this is uh, uh, one of the most uh, uh, aggressive uh, kind of uh, uh, of invasion. And then finally, uh, one cell sometimes digs some kind of uh, of tunnel through the ECM, and then some other cell follows, uh, and this is a case of uh, of a trail uh, migration. So then the idea of the model is to reproduce these uh, different modes, uh, to understand the mechanism uh, behind, uh, also to do some comparison and validation with uh, uh, in vitro uh, experiments, and hopefully to learn some uh, uh, biological uh, insights. And uh, so how did we plan to do uh, uh, to develop a multi-scale modeling? So the idea would be to combine multi-agent uh, system uh, to have physical properties uh, uh, of, the, of the cells, with stochastic simulation on Boolean network to represent the interplay between gene and proteins. And uh, mixing these two uh, approach, we want to simulate this complex system. Uh, let me spend a couple of words about multi-agent system for doesn't know this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, technique. So uh, what is agent-oriented programming uh, in this kind of, uh, of, uh, of modeling? We have an agent, which is a computational object with uh, specific uh, uh, characteristics. So each agent is autonomous, so it makes independent decision without any human intervention. It is social, so it can communicate with uh, other agents uh, and exchange information, but it's also reactive. So it perceives the environment uh, uh, around and it can also modify it. And the idea of this technique is to capture non-intuitive uh, collective behavior from uh, simple agent-agent uh, -agent interactions. So, uh, the the tool that we uh, we used uh, is called the PhysiCell, which is, is a physics based uh, cell simulator developed by uh, the team at the Indiana University, led by Paul Macklin uh, and Randy Helland. So uh, PhysiCell is a, an agent based uh, um, uh, an agent based software that simulates uh, uh, agent as a cell, and each cell has certain property like uh, a size, a position in a three dimensional uh, three dimensional uh, space but also has some phenotypical pro properties. So it can have a different cell cycle model, uh, that can have different death model, different rates, uh, custom variables, uh, and other molecular models. Uh, so it means that each cell can uh, switch between the cycle phases, uh, it can grow, it can migrate, so move from one place to another, it can interact with other cells. These cells also include uh, uh, BioFVM, which is uh, uh, a software that simulates the diffusion, the decay, and uptake of uh, different uh, uh, substrates uh, in the microenvironment. Uh, so basically, we can simulate uh, oxygen diffusion. We can also simulate virus, uh, all the molecules that uh, uh, are important for, uh, uh, for our simulation, for our model. Uh, and then for the Boolean network part, we have uh, uh, MABOS. So MABOS is a software that, we, that was developed uh, at Institute Theory uh, and simulates continuous time uh, Mark Markov processes on, uh, on Boolean network. Uh, and it does, uh, as you can see uh, in the picture uh, here, a Boolean network is an object that represents interaction between, uh, between nodes. Each node uh, uh, is characterized by a logical, uh, a logical equation and uh, some, uh, some rates. And of course, we can have uh, more complex uh, uh, logical uh, logical equation. In our case, a boolean uh, uh, like a node uh, sorry represents 
uh, a gene or a protein, so it can be activated and inhibited, inhibited by other gene and protein. And the rates represents uh, how uh, how fast a node uh, is activated or uh, inhibited. And thanks to Mabos, we can uh, simulate different initial condition and try mutation. And uh, thanks to this kind of, of graph, we can monitor over time uh, the activity of a node or uh, the overall states of, uh, of the network. So for example, if we want to simulate a condition where we have uh, TGF beta, uh, then we can uh, switch it off or switch it on in the Boolean network. And then we can check what is the final, uh, uh, the, the final state of the network, the most probable states uh, of the network. And this is really a mixed approach between, uh, uh, between uh, pure continuous time uh, ODEs, let's say, system and uh, a, Boolean, uh, a Boolean approach. And so if we put together Physicel and Mabos, we have Physibos, which is a multi-scale agent-based modeling framework where, where each uh, agent incorporates a, a, a Boolean network that, uh, as I said, represents the interplay between uh, uh, gene and proteins. So uh, I will describe, uh, describe it better in the next uh, uh, slides, but basically uh, at each uh, simulation step, each agent cell uh, will collect the stimuli uh, that comes from other agents and the microenvironments, and then according to the states of the of the network, it will perform some behaviors and acquire different uh, phenotypes. So uh, the introduction is uh, is over. So let's get into detail uh, of the model. So this is a, a story that we published a couple of months ago uh, on bioinformatics that uh, uh, basically took, uh, um, I think, around three years of, uh, of development. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, I was uh, while I was developing this model, I was supervised by uh, Lorenz Calzon, Vincent Noel, and Andrei Zinobiev. Uh, but we also collaborated a lot with the people uh, uh, in Curie, uh, particularly with the uh, Lab of Isabel Bonnet, uh, Olivier Destang, and Philippe Chavrier. Uh, and also, uh, we collaborated with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, uh, uh, in particular with uh, uh, Arna Montagu for the developing of the model. So let's start with the network, uh, which is uh, the first thing that uh, uh, we developed for, uh, for this model. Uh, the network that we used uh, was built upon two pu already published models uh, uh, from Cohen et al. and Selvaggio et al. This network uh, uh, focused on reproducing the different uh, uh, different dynamics between uh, uh, involved in the invasion process. So uh, in the network, you can see uh, different genes from the HIPPO pathways, ROGDP assays, the main EMT regulators. And as you can see, there are on top of the network, there are some orange uh, nodes that uh, represent the input of the network. So those stimulated collected by uh, each agent, like uh, oxygen, growth factor, TGF beta, uh, extracellular matrix, uh, neighboring cells, and DNA damage. And then in blue, you have the nodes that we call phenotype nodes that uh, recapitulates the, the states of the network, like uh, EMT, uh, which stands for epithelial to mesenchymal transition, uh, cell growth, extracellular matrix adhesion, degradation, migration, cell freeze, cell cycle arrest, and finally apoptosis. So first we build the model, and then with Mabos, we uh, simulated it uh, to check that the model was both reproducing uh, uh, previous uh, uh, results from, uh, from the paper we, uh, we developed it from, uh, but also to make sure that it was reproducing the correct phenotype according to the different conditions. So for example, at the center of the tumor, we suppose uh, the cells to uh, sense oxygen, growth factor, and neighbors. And so uh, the resulted phenotype would be cell freeze and cell growth. So basically it's the core uh, of the tumor that is not moving, but it's just uh, uh, growing. While inside at the border of the tumor, when the cell is sensing the extracellular matrix, uh, then we wanted to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the network would be into uh, an, uh, an EMT uh, condition, let's say. So uh, have the nodes EMT uh, on, as well as extracellular matrix adhesion, uh, migration, uh, and um, uh, extracellular matrix uh, degradation. So once uh, we made sure that the model was reproducing the, the good uh, uh, behavior, we proceed into uh, implanting the network into, into our agent. So uh, how, do, how, how did we do this? 
each agent has a set uh, of uh, uh, of behavior can move uh, growth uh, can uh, breathe can react also to stimulate and update some internal variables so basically when each uh, when an agent a cell is close to a, a uh, a source of stimuli, like in this case, the accessorial matrix, uh, then is uh, sampling the density of the ECM. And when the density uh, or the contact uh, is above a certain threshold, then it will trigger, so it will turn uh, on the corresponding nodes in the Boolean network. Then my boss will uh, uh, calculate the most probable uh, trajectories. And uh, when we check the state of the network, uh, there will be some of those output nodes that will be on and off. So the, on, the, the nodes that are on are linked to some, uh, some behavior, like for example, EMT is a node that controls the amount of adhesion for a, a mesenchymal and epithelial cell. So when it's on, the mesenchymal cell will start losing a, a adhesion junction uh, and, it, and they will acquire more motility. And so as you can see here, the cell becomes green and then in uh, uh, the next simulation steps will start migrating. Okay. So uh, the model also includes the three different substrates, uh, oxygen, exosolar matrix, and TGF beta. Well, oxygen is a diffusive substrate so that basically diffuses from the border of the, uh, of the simulation and is necessary for the cell metabolism, but is also used as a, a chemotaxis signal. So when a cell, uh, migrates, it will follow uh, the gradient of oxygen. Then we have the accessorial matrix, which is a non-diffusive uh, substrate. So is uh, is basically a barrier uh, that uh, uh, is uh, uh, impeding the cells to, to move uh, uh, through, um, through the voxels. Uh, and finally, we have the TGF beta, which is a semi-diffusive uh, substrate, which is trapped inside the accessorial matrix. And when the cell approaches a voxel, uh, which is a three-dimensional pixel that stores those substrate and degrade the ECM. When it degrades uh, above a, a certain threshold, then the TGF beta will be released and the cell will be able to uptake the TGF beta and then uh, regulate the corresponding nodes. And you can see in the picture here, an example of the output of the simulation. So thanks to my boss, uh, to Fisi boss, we can simulate and then track different parameters for each uh, uh, at each time step. We can also check the state of the substrate. So in this case, we have the density of the exocellular matrix. And in this case, we have uh, the oxygen level. So as you can see, the gradient is different according to the cell density. We can track the, the amount of cell contact for each cell. So in the core of the tumor, there is more cell contact than in the, uh, in the outskirt of the tumor, let's say. Uh, or we can monitor the different cell cycle phase for each uh, uh, cell type. And finally, so this is uh, uh, just a slice of the 3D simulation, but we can use uh, external software like Paraview to reproduce and have this kind of um, video of the 3D spirit growing through the ECM <coughs> and then invading. So, uh, once we build the model, we wanted to test it uh, to see if we could, uh, we could reproduce some uh, published experiment. Uh, and I will show you in the next uh, slides three different experiments that we managed to, uh, to reproduce uh, according to different, um, uh, let's say, different properties that we want to, uh, that we want to stress. So uh, I will start with this uh, uh, publication from Elina et al., uh, from the lab of uh, Peter Friedel. This is a lab that did lots of experiments uh, uh, about uh, invasion uh, through extracellular matrix. And in particular, in this, um, in this paper, they show how uh, different uh, uh, collagen concentration can affect the migration modes. So as you can see in picture A, uh, in this case, uh, in the experiments, uh, the author set a low density heterogeneous uh, extracellular matrix. And as you can see, there is uh, a spread of single cell uh, migration. While instead, when we are in a situation with a high density collagen and homogeneous, uh, there is no this, there is not this spread of cells in the in the collagen, but the tumor is a bit more confined, and we have this protrusion, which are kind of a, a, a kind of collective uh, uh, migration. So 
it's easy with uh, with EasyBoss to manipulate uh, the, the density of the accessorial matrix. And so uh, we just applied a filter that randomized the ECM inside the, each voxel, uh, and uh, we applied a, a low density uh, collagen in the simulation. And as you can see, we managed to reproduce uh, the, the, the same uh, uh, condition qualitatively, where we have uh, a spread of single cell uh, through the microenvironment. While instead, if we set the high uh, density extracellular matrix uh, homogeneous, then the tumor is more confined, exactly like in the experiment, and we have the formation of this uh, of this protrusion, and the cell will be uh, will uh, will migrate uh, collectively. Then uh, we we tested the different mutation uh, through uh, the manipulation of the Boolean network. So in the first case, we manipulated the uh, uh, physical, let's say, parameters, so the density of the of the substrate. In this experiment, we want to uh, to stress the uh, the Boolean network. So, in uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, with Philippe Chavrier, uh, which is our collaborator at Institute Curie, we try to reproduce uh, his experiment. So, basically, from the paper of uh, Lodinsky uh, et al. In this, in their work. Uh, they tested the, the relations between uh, uh, P63 and the MT1 MMP. So basically, it took a spheroid of, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of cancer cell uh, and surrounded in, uh, in matrigel. And then they applied the short arc pin of P63. So basically, they sil sil silenced the P63 and they noticed that the cells no longer were secreting MT1 MMP. And so it means that the cells were not able to degrade the extracellular matrix and so invade. Uh, instead, when they did the rescue of MT1 MMP, but also when they overexpressed the P63, all the cells were able to degrade the, the, the matrix, and so the, the tumor was able to, uh, to grow through the collagen. So since we have P63 in our network, we try to do the same. So first, we tested the, with Mabos if uh, the correct phenotype was reproduced, and indeed, indeed it was. So when P63 is on, uh, the most probable state is uh, uh, is a state with extracellular matrix uh, degradation on. While when we are doing uh, a knockout of P63, uh, then uh, the uh, the most probable state uh, is with extracellular matrix degradation uh, off. And uh, this is also uh, confirmed at uh, uh, with uh, with PCBOS. So when we do the mutation, the whole tumor mutation, and we have a P63 knock-in, all the cells are able to degrade the external matrix, so the tumor is, uh, is expanding. While we are doing a knockout, the tumor is confined because the cells cannot uh, pass through the pass through the, the external matrix, and so um, uh, the tumor cannot, uh, uh, cannot expand. So we did a further analysis. Uh, we uh, calculated the, the density of the of, of cell per voxel. Uh, and when we do a P63 overexpression, density is uh, uh, is way less because the tumor is occupying more space, uh, and in fact the uh, also the area uh, occupied by the tumor is uh, is higher. While instead, when we do a P63 inhibition, the area occupied by by the sphere is um, uh, is uh, almost halved, and the cellular density uh, is uh, uh, is almost doubled. So this confirmed uh, the fact that the tumor was uh, indeed confined during uh, the inhibition of P63. And uh, one cool thing that we can do with EasyBoss uh, that we would like, we want to do, is to suggest potential uh, uh, treatment. So in this case, uh, we reproduce a P63 overexpression uh, condition. But then on top of the condition, we mutate, uh, we did a knockout of uh, ERK, which is involved uh, not only in the metabolic part of the network, but also uh, in the um, uh, invasive part, let's say. And uh, I introduced uh, an ERK knockout of mid simulation to see uh, the difference between uh, before and after uh, the, um, the ERK knockout. And as you can see, at the beginning, the tumor is growing, uh, is uh, is developing. But then, when introduced the the knockout, the cell uh, suddenly starts uh, uh, dying. Almost uh, uh, basically, ninety percent of the cells uh, dies. So this is a way, or how we can uh, um, we, we can suggest potential uh, uh, target for uh, uh, for treatment. Finally, the last experiment that I want to show you uh, comes from uh, a work of uh, Isabel Bonnet and uh, Olivier Destang. Uh, this is a very, uh, a very cool project. Uh, basically, in their work, they took uh, a monolayer of, uh, of epithelial cell, uh, and then they engineered these, uh, uh, these cells so they would be, they would uh, react to uh, blue light uh, stimuli. And and when the blue light 
uh, is uh, is turned on in the middle of the of the monolayer, uh, the cell starts um, uh, expressing SARC. So uh, it's uh, uh, they uh, they have a SARC overexpression, and they notice that uh, under this uh, condition on the surface of the of the monolayer there was the formation of these uh, of these aggregates, and when they turn off. Uh, the the blue light the situation was reversed and um, the the the, mes the, mes the mesenchymal phenotype was uh, was reversed to epithelia so we tried to reproduce the very same condition so we had the monolayer of cells and then uh, we we controlled the spatial temporal activation of the of the sarcomcoprotein thanks to physibos so we uh, introduced a, a substrate that we call the blue light that was activating the mutation just in the center and as you can see the cell we start expressing a, a SARC, so uh, uh, we did a knock-in of SARC in the center, and then uh, the, those cells became mesenchymal, and it starts uh, pushing the other cells to to migrate. And when we turn off uh, the, the the simulated light, let's say the situation was uh, was reversed, and uh, the center of the of the sphere the return uh, basically almost fully epithelial. This is in 2D, and this is what we managed to reproduce in three dimensions. So we have this, uh, uh, again, the monolayer. And when we activate uh, uh, SARC, the cell starts following the, the gradient of oxygen. They migrate on top of the of the monolayer. Uh, and then when we turn off uh, the light, the, the migration stops. Uh, and slowly, the cells uh, fill the, the hole uh, uh, left from the mesenchymal cell uh, because of the, of the replication. And finally, as we did uh, for uh, the P63 uh, experiment, we try to uh, to go over, and so to uh, to we we decided to introduce the same ERK uh, knockout that we uh, introduced for the P63 uh, experiment to check if uh, uh, if we reproduce the same condition, so if all the cells would have uh, would have died in in this way. Uh, so in panel A, you can see a normal uh, simulation where uh, SARC was active uh, for all the cells, and there is lots of, uh, of, of invasion in this case. So again, mid-simulation, we introduced these uh, ERK inhibiting mutation, but this time the cells, instead of dying, they were just uh, uh, frozen. Uh, so we stopped the, um, uh, the mutation, but uh, uh, the tumor was, uh, was not dying. So uh, these are uh, uh, different results, uh, but uh, uh, indeed was uh, was quite interesting to observe. Uh, and finally, once we uh, reproduce uh, those uh, those experiments, uh, we uh, we wanted to analyze the parameter space of the model. So indeed, the model uh, is characterized by lots of parameters. So every time, basically, we, we were coding a new behavior for the cells, we were basically introducing uh, uh, new parameters and new variable. Uh, so uh, at current state, the model includes more than 25 uh, parameters. And according how you tweak those parameters, uh, we can basically favorite more single cell invasion or, uh, or collective. So. Uh, we decided to uh, to perform uh, an analysis, but in order to do analysis, we needed to quantify uh, the, the invasion modes. So for this, we use the network X. So basically, we extrapolate from, uh, um, from the simulation the list uh, of uh, interacting neighbor for each cell, and we recreate, re recreate uh, with network X the network of, uh, of the interacting uh, cells. And as you can see, we have this big red cluster, which uh, represents the core of the tumor, while the blue nodes are cells that are migrating without any interaction, uh, any addition, while uh, the cells in, in pink represents the, um, uh, the clusters. So with this way of quantifying the, uh, the output, uh, we perform a sensitivity analysis on a subset of uh, seven parameters. Uh, so for each value of those parameters, we did we run 50 simulation in order to, uh, to um, uh, perform a statistics out of it. And in this way, we were able to modulate the presence of uh, single cells, uh, selling clusters, but also the number of clusters. And we run the, this, uh, this uh, sensitivity analysis on the cluster that we have uh, uh, in Curie. And still, uh, the, the, the sensitivity analysis took uh, more than one week of continuous computational time. So it was quite uh, uh, computational extensive. 
And uh, let me show you uh, a partial uh, results uh, of this uh, of this sensitivity analysis. Uh, if you are interested in more details, uh, uh, you can uh, check the supplementary material of the uh, of the paper. So, uh, as I said, according to which parameters uh, uh, we we modulate, we can have different behaviors. So, for example, uh, with the analysis, we notice that the migration bias. If we rise the, um, uh, if we increase the value of uh, migration bias. So how much a cell wants to follow the gradient of oxygen? Uh, we basically, we are increasing the number of single cell, uh, but for mid low value of this, param of this uh, parameter, the number of, uh, of cell in cluster is uh, slightly above uh, the number of, uh, of single cell. While instead, if we uh, tweak and we if we, if we vary the, the amount of uh, uh, the threshold for, the extracellular matrix contact, so that triggers the node uh, ECM in the network. We see that if we increase uh, this value, the the invasion is uh, uh, is um, uh, is reduced. Uh, so at certain point, we have a, a suddenly decrease for value around zero point seventy five, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, basically. The single cell remains the most uh, uh, present kind of uh, uh, of invasion. And finally, let me talk about the challenges that we faced while uh, developing the model, but also after we we developed it. The first one uh, is quite uh, uh, was, was I think it was quite obvious from uh, what you just saw of the sensitivity analysis, which is uh, how can we find the optimal set of uh, parameters. So to answer this question, our idea was to develop uh, is to develop surrogate models. So basically, we want to uh, create a machine learning algorithm that will mimic uh, the Feasibos uh, simulation. So a Feasibos simulation can take uh, up to one hour, but if instead uh, we, we, if we would manage to, to train uh, a back black box to reproduce uh, the Feasibos uh, uh, model, then uh, this kind of model can be run in, uh, uh, in more or less uh, one second. And then we can compare the output from the surrogates with the, uh, with the output of Feasibos and, uh, and check if uh, they are correctly reproduced some uh, in vitro experiment. And if it's not uh, reproducing that, uh, uh, it means that it can be or a problem of the of the surrogate, so we need to retrain with more data, or could be a problem of the uh, of the model, and so we have to uh, modify the model somehow. And uh, this uh, this routine would be way faster than uh, working just with the the Feasibos, uh, uh, model. And the other challenge is the data integration. So what kind of data can we use to develop model, or what kind of data can we use to uh, to feed? Them? The model. So uh, for now, uh, we are working on uh, uh, on uh, on methods uh, to to include the transcriptomics and proteomics uh, data, both bulk, uh, bulk and uh, and single cell. So uh, my my colleague uh, uh, Saran Pankyu is a postdoc uh, uh, in our um, uh, in our group group uh, at Curie. Developed uh, uh, this uh, uh, Pi profile. So profile is a uh, is a software uh, based on uh, uh, R that was developed at the beginning by uh, Jonas Behal. Uh, which was a previous uh, postdoc in our group, and then uh, uh, Saran uh, uh, took over the project and developed uh, the Python version. Uh, and thanks to Profile, we can uh, personalize the, the Boolean network so we can adjust the transition rates uh, of the um, uh, of the nodes according to the amount of transcriptome uh, uh, in your data. So this is one way that we can we can use uh, uh, omics data to uh, personalize uh, uh, the Feasibos model. Uh, we are also working uh, in collaboration with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center to some methods to include spatial transcriptomics in simulation, uh, which would be uh, great because in spatial transcriptomics we have a cell position and a transcriptome for uh, uh, for each uh, um, basically each pixel of the of the image, and so. Uh, the idea would be to use a slice of special trust from special transcriptomics uh, uh, data uh, as initial condition for for uh, for Feasibos. and this is a, a project uh, 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 work by uh, Alejandro Madrid at BSC. So uh, let me conclude uh, 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 not the, the webinar because I still have a couple of things uh, uh, to show, but uh, just uh, a couple of conclusions about the model. 
So uh, I hope I convinced you that this model efficiently reproduces, uh, can reproduce efficiently in vitro uh, experiments and among possible applications, the model can suggest and anticipate the potential risk of, uh, of metastasis. But more genes and pathways uh, in future release will be included. Uh, uh, currently, uh, uh, Sofia Orozco Ruiz uh, was a former uh, master student in our lab and now will start uh, her PhD and uh, worked on a MET uh, model. So the idea would, uh, uh, would be to include the MET uh, in this uh, uh, EMT uh, model. And then uh, more cell types could be introduced to reproduce also a possible uh, immune response like cancer associated fibroblasts, T cells, or microphages. And instead, for the limitation, of course, there is a large number of parameters that is getting better thanks to the new version uh, of the model developed uh, thanks to the update of a physics and physics boss. Uh, and still, there is lots of, uh, of noise uh, uh, in the results, and this is indeed uh, something that we have uh, to tackle. And there is a big computational time difference between 2D and 3D simulation. Right now, 2D simulation can take up to a couple of minutes, but 3D simulation can take up to one hour. And then let me show you some other example of what you can do with EasyBoss. So uh, this is something that uh, uh, we developed uh, uh, in our team. So uh, maybe, as you noticed, uh, the, the model was uh, was focused on, uh, uh, on, on invasion, uh, but uh, we also developed uh, a model uh, for reproducing uh, 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 the cell cycle. So normally, physical cell uh, provides with uh, uh, transition rates to move the, from one cell cycle phase to another. So we use the, an already published uh, uh, cell cycle model, uh, the model from CISEC uh, uh, et al, uh, to fully control the switch uh, between the cell cycle phases and the results you can see it uh, in the video. Also, PhysiCell and PhysiBoss uh, are also getting easier uh, to use thanks to this uh, graphic interface developed by uh, Randy Helen and uh, Vincent Noel. And uh, uh, also thanks to this, uh, we managed to develop way faster, uh, very complex uh, uh, model or model that at the beginning would have been very compli uh, complicated to, uh, to develop. Like uh, uh, in, the, in the video, you are seeing uh, a population of dendritic cell uh, getting attracted to um, uh, uh, a simulated lymph node and then starting the differentiation of an AFT cells. And finally, there are so many other tools linked to PhysiCell. Uh, in particular, uh, I'm collaborating with uh, uh, Cecily McNamara and Robin uh, uh, Shuttleworth uh, for uh, developing this, uh, uh, this extension of PhysiCell that reproduces the fibers of the extracellular matrix as uh, sticks. And according of how those sticks are uh, position, uh, uh, then we can have a different uh, a way for of the tumor to grow and uh, to invade. So uh, with this, I finish my presentation. So I would like to acknowledge all uh, our collaborators, my supervisors, uh, Vincent Noel, Laurence, and André, uh, and uh, our collaborators both at uh, Curie, uh, at Grenoble, at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center at Indiana University. And uh, I thank you all for the attention and to thanks also the organizer of this uh, webinar. And I'm ready to take uh, uh, any question. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you very much. Very, very nice presentation. Thanks. Uh, so yes, yeah, so just as said at the beginning of the webinar, uh, you can use the Q&A button in your Zoom panel to uh, ask any questions. Um, so while we wait for the first questions, I would like to ask if you have thought about using the model with other types of uh, cells or types of um, physiological or pathological situations. So right now uh, we we didn't plan to uh, to use the model for for other uh, situation, but this is a uh, uh, this is uh, the future of the model to be extended. So we will modify both the network and we uh, increase the accuracy of the uh, of the behavior and the overall of the, of the model to reproduce uh, way more scenarios uh, but also uh, other uh, other pathological cases yes but uh, one thing that the user can uh, can do uh, if we want to reproduce uh, different uh, uh, different things uh, it can uh, use uh, users can use their own boolean models. So if if you have a model with similar input and similar output, you can just uh, replace the model uh, uh, we made uh, the boolean network and uh, plug yours uh, to uh, to reproduce different uh, different things or uh, uh, different phenotypes. Okay, 
So is that more or less where you see the, the, the model going in the, in the future? Uh, can you repeat the question, sorry? Is that more or less where you see the, the model going in the future? Or what yes. Do you expect to that? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, we have a question uh, about learning learning resources for the software. Uh, so we can uh, include now as answers there some of the some of the learning resources from Permit COE. So um, on the website there are some uh, self learning materials for some of the tools developed by uh, Permit COE. Um, well, another... in my case, yeah. uh, uh, well. There are some nice tutorial uh, online, uh, both provided by Permit COE, but also in the GitHub page of uh, of Physicel. You can have a look at the sample projects, uh, both of Physicel and Physibos. But also uh, with um, with my supervisors, we are planning to release uh, a Physibos tutorial in the in the next months, uh, which uh, should guide the user step by step of how uh, how to take a Boolean model and. Uh, uh, build the feasible simulation starting from it. Uh, we are currently uh, working on uh, on that. Uh, this this paper will include the, the Boolean um, uh, cell cycle model that I showed you uh, before, uh, the T cell differentiation, as well as the TNF uh, response uh, model, and the new version of the invasion model. Okay, perfect. Good to know. Um, another question we have now is. Uh, I am working with crosstalk pathways through Boolean modeling. How well can that be integrated with PCBOS crosstalk so, pathways? So if you're if you're working with crosstalk pathway, um, uh, well, once you have your your uh, your Boolean model and you are reproducing uh, uh, your uh, uh, your pathway, well, a Boolean model in the Boolean network, uh, each node don't have to be uh, just a gene or a protein, but it can also be a whole pathway, for example, you can have a node that uh, can stand for the wind pathway. Uh, and uh, uh, well, once you have the Boolean model and you and you know what you want to uh, to reproduce uh, in terms of phenotypes, uh, then uh, uh, first you need to convert it into a uh, into a, a Mabos uh, model. Uh, so it means that if you have a, a, a C file or a, a I don't know a BNet one. You have to convert it into uh, into Mabos uh, uh, formalism. So having a BND and CFG file, uh, run the analysis on uh, on Mabos first, and, and then uh, with the latest version of Physibos, it's e very easy to plug uh, and to connect each uh, nodes uh, like input or output to uh, specific phenotypes that will be automatically created. Uh, in the latest um, update of, of Physicel, there is this new uh, dictionary of, um, of signals uh, and behavior that uh, makes it uh, very, very easy to, um, uh, to do. It's, it's really easy. OK, perfect. Thanks, Marco. Another question. Have you thought of a reverse sensitivity analysis? That is, to find migration inhibition inhibition targets that are maximally robust differences in the cellular matrix parameters. So more general, generally applicable, so more generally applicable across individual patients. This, uh, this is indeed a good, uh, a good question. Uh, so I have to admit that I didn't uh, think about that, but uh, uh, it's, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice idea. Uh, currently I was, uh, I was thinking to, to do a, uh, a sweep analysis of the model uh, and also a new sensitivity analysis using a um, uh, genetic uh, uh, algorithm uh, to check uh, which are those parameters or uh, drug target that can uh, uh, inhibit more uh, the invasion modes, but uh, uh, also uh, find uh, migration inhibition tar targets for uh, for the to check the robustness, it's it's a it's a nice idea. Uh, thanks. Okay. Perfect. Um, we have put in the chat now for everyone uh, some of the learning uh, resources that uh, were mentioned, the GitHub and also from the Permit COE website. Um, another question that we have: Will we be able to apply this model to microbiolo microbiological studies? Where we can add more parameters and stimulate and study the prokaryotic cells as well. 
So I'm not an expert in uh, uh, in uh, micro microbiome. I, I have to uh, I have to admit uh, I have really sparse knowledge about it. But uh, uh, in my opinion, I I think so. So the microbiome can be take. I think you can take into account the microbiome through, uh, for example, simulating it as a as a substrate and then including uh, uh, new input nodes that take into account the presence of. Uh, of the microbiome, uh, but uh, uh, the model is highly personalizable. So uh, I think it could be uh, it could be it could be possible. Yes, mm. and I guess similarly also, rather than the microbiome inside a host, maybe just a, a yeah, I like mean, a biofilm, for example, like a group of bacteria in some other context, right? Yes, yes. I mean, in the end, uh, uh, the agent can represent a cell, but can also represent uh, whatever you want. So you can change the the size uh, and reproduce not just uh, uh, cancer cells, but uh, yeah, population of bacteria. This is, uh, I think, this is a strong point of uh, of agent based modeling that you can uh, uh, you can reproduce the, the biological condition that you want. Uh, considering that uh, the more you go into details, the more parameters you introduce, the heaviest will be the the, the simulation, and the, uh, the the more complicated it will be to uh, tweak the different parameters. Okay, I see one of our participants has has the hand raised. So if you want to go ahead and talk, yeah, thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Can hear you. Yeah. Hi, uh, Marco. It's uh, Malvina, Malvina from CRCT. Uh, so thank you very much for your presentation. I had two uh, brief questions. Um, one regarding uh, uh, profile, uh, where you said that uh, we can also incorporate the bulk or uh, single cell RNA seq data for uh, building personalized models. To say like um, um, either in the Boolean model scale or in the like the cellular level. So in, in, in the case of single cell RNA-seq, does it mean that in Physibos, each cell would be um, uh, like the, the Boolean model for each of the cell in the Physibos model would be taken from the single cell um, data, like the Boolean models would be different for each of the cells? So that that would be that would be one uh, one case. Yes, that would be the idea. Uh, of course, if you do it uh, right now, it would be quite uh, uh, quite uh, challenging. No, because it means that you need a, a configuration uh, a Mabos configuration file for each uh, uh, cell type. But uh, um, uh, it's uh, it's doable. Yes, you can have uh, like um, hundreds and hundreds of the of cells, each one with. Uh, uh, its own uh, uh, transition rates uh, mm -hmm. and so uh, personalized. Yes, this is something. Uh, then also, uh, I have to admit that I don't know the specific of uh, of a profile. Uh, so uh, for more specific uh, uh, question, uh, uh, I, I suggest to talk with uh, with uh, uh, Saran. But um, concerning Physibos, uh, yes, that would be uh, that would be the direction. I think it would be mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And um, the other question that I had, actually, like a, a, more like a remark, it was on slide 31 when you performed the sensitivity analysis and you were observing which mode of migration was more probable um, yeah. for a different uh, set of parameters. So, like, I noticed that for um, uh, the simulation that you have performed for each of the modes, uh, um, you have a lot of variability between yes. the simulations. So, any clue, like, where does it come from? Yes, I have uh, many clues <laughs> to be fair, uh, because it's the first thing that we that we noticed that the variability was uh, was really huge, and, and and this in this is is a problem. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why we we want to investigate further how to do the uh, to to improve uh, this uh, this aspect. Uh, it can it can comes from different factors. First of all, it can come from the uh, the stochasticity. Uh, both in uh, Mabos and in Physicel, there are so many random generator uh, mm -hmm. through the through the software that are running through the software. So this could be one one reason. The other reason could be uh, how do we quantify the output? Uh, let me let me be a bit more precise. So uh, if I go back over one slide, so here, so. Usually, what I do is uh, I take the simulation at uh, a precise time step, okay, and then I draw the network of the interacting cell, okay. 
when I'm doing this, uh, I'm also calculating the, the motility vector for each uh, cell, and I consider a cluster, those cells that are migrating uh, in uh, uh, more or less the same direction, where this more or less is a, a certain degree of, um, uh, of, of variability. Mm -hmm. uh, and this can be for time step t. But at time step t plus 1, the motility vector can, can be already changed. And then two cells can be not neighbor anymore, you see. Uh -huh. So uh, I think this variability also uh, comes uh, fr from this. Uh, and since each simulation uh, uh, is different, so the, the, the condition is not always uh, uh, the same. But in the new version of this model, the, uh, the adhesion part is uh, uh, better defined through this uh, new feature of having a spring-like adhesion. So the cluster are more cohesive mm -hmm. when they migrate. So there is a, a net distinction between single and migrating a, a cluster. Uh, so uh, uh, I guess that when I will do the CCG analysis on the, on the new uh, model, there will be less variability, but uh, uh, I, I don't know right now. I, I, have to, I have still to perform it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Malvina, for, for those questions. Um, I don't see any questions right now. So if you can stop sharing your screen, Marco, I will just share mine for a moment while wow. we wait in case there are any other questions. Okay. So uh, just as mentioned, you can still uh, ask questions if you want. We have a few more minutes. And meanwhile, I just wanted to uh, uh, remind everyone that you can go to the Permit COE website to see um, some of the other training activities. So you can watch all the previous webinars, all the recordings are there. Uh, we plan to have another webinar uh, in December, it will be announced uh, soon. And also to let you know, uh, in December, we plan to uh, run a new edition of the of the course from Brown to Atomics to Mechanistic Models of Signaling, which ran in April and was uh, highly demanded. Uh, still to be confirmed, but very likely that will take place on Tuesday, 12th of December and registrations will open soon. Uh, so follow us on the website and follow us on social media, um, LinkedIn and Twitter to hear uh, when we open the registrations that, as I just said, it's likely that will happen maybe already uh, this week. Okay, so any last questions, anyone? Or any other uh, comments from your side, Marco? Thank you again. <laughs> okay, so in that case, then uh, thank you everyone for attending the webinar and uh, we hope to see you soon in future activities. Thank you all for attending. Bye-bye.